Good morning, preppers. Happy day to you. I'm down here this morning because, well, to be honest with you, our table has a big project on it sitting right now. I couldn't do it up there. Don't tell my wife I said our kitchen's not clean. But anyway, the, my wife and I, Ashley, were having coffee this morning and uh, just starting our day. And suddenly we heard some noises from out front. Now we have some things to let us know that somebody's approaching the house. And we're like, uh oh, somebody's coming, which is really weird because we're way out in the country. I mean, way out in the middle of nowhere. And sure enough, he knocked on the door which didn't ring the doorbell, which I kind of found that kind of odd too. And I go to the door and here's this, I guess the best way you can describe him is this dude. He's just a dude. And he's like over leaning on my smoker. And I'm like, hey, what can I do for you? And he immediately starts in by saying, hey, good morning. How you doing? And puts his hand out. How you doing, buddy? And says, uh, well, I'm here because uh, I was just talking to one of your neighbors, which I'm not going to mention what neighbor it was. And, and they have three daughters and said, you might want to. I was like, hold on, listen. Can you get to it? I got, I have things to do. Just what's going on? He goes, okay. And he like, he like picked up right where he left off. It was like a canned speech. I'm sure it was. I was also down at the Ogden farms and talked to them about some different books and stuff and homeschool books. And I was like, all right, I, now I can already smell the salesperson. I was like, obviously you're, you know, trying to sell us some homeschool books and stuff. I was like, listen, can you really get to it? And he goes, yeah, anyways, I just want to come over and talk to you about, I want to go through. And, 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 and although I was really, I'm really trying to stress that I was cutting him off, which I was, he was not getting to the point. He was not really saying it. If he would have simply said, hey, listen, I got some homeschool books I want to talk to you about, I probably still would have said no. But I had to cut the guy off because he just kept rambling, rambling on, rambling on. He was looking for that red thread, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And so anyway, long story short, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have time for this. And he goes, oh, Okay. And then off he goes. Now, when he came to the door, this is something I, I figured we can turn this into a lesson because when people come to your door, come to your house, you need to be on alert for this, including this guy too. I mean, he came across as trying to sell some books, but he could have been probing, you know, basically a military strategy of checking out the house and see what's going on. Maybe want to route the house or even worse. That's the kind of things you need to really look at. And we're going to go through, therefore, 10 things you need to look at for your home safety, especially when somebody comes to your door. But with that, I mean, these are very important, all of them are, but wait to the end because I'm going to give you a bonus. And there are some things that you hopefully haven't thought about that this will, this video will change your thinking because we really need to protect ourselves in this time of, well, this time of scariness. All right, let's go through it. The 10 things you need to do to keep your house safe. Number one, have an alert system. Now, I don't care what kind of alert system you have, and I'll be modeling some on the channel soon. Um, you can actually get motion detectors for outside. Um, there's actually camera systems that actually have PIR motion sensors on them. But I'll be honest with you, if you have any of these things, you'll find that any animals and stuff going by constantly, constantly sound to chime in through the house. And it, it really gets aggravating after a while to the point you'll probably just shut it off. I will tell you probably the best thing right now that you could actually have to detect motion outside a dog. And I don't care if your dog is ferocious or a little yapper or whatever kind of dog you have, but the fact that they bark, somebody coming at the door is a great thing. It's like the most amazing thinking alarm system or alert system you can have. And I've seen so many people, when somebody comes to the door, the dog barks and they'll like, say, no, no, if I don't know, stop barking. No, you should be rewarding them, petting them and saying, good job, good job. I mean, keeping them from jumping on the neighbors. Yeah, you don't want that to happen. But you want to praise them for doing what comes instinctual to them. And that's alerting you that something is not in the norm there. And especially as we get into troubled times, that is a very important thing to have. Keep your doors locked. And I mean, keep it locked at all times. When we first moved in this house years ago, uh, we actually it came with a big heavy door in the front door. It was great. But we like to have the front door open just for the fact that we like to have a breeze going through the house in the summertime. I mean, that's what Michigan's all about is just absolute gorgeous weather. And having just the front door open, besides bugs coming in, lets anybody come in the house. It's not a good strategy. So we bought a pretty heavy duty storm door and reinforced it. And it's one of the kinds where you can open the windows up and let the screens in uh, open so you can let the breezes come through. And listen, if you actually have that, or maybe even like a, a, a cheaper screen door, somebody's going to get through it. Obviously, it's not to completely stop somebody, but it's to slow them down. I mean, even if you actually have a heavy wood door, they can get through it. You understand that. But it slows them down just enough to them where you can actually do something to protect yourself. All right. So when it comes to these doors, you want to make sure you keep them locked because I've seen video after video as I review things to basically better myself, my family, and for you too, where sometimes thieves and stuff will literally just come right to your door and see if it's open. And often in these different types of uh, little cameras they have in their, on their front porch, they'll just walk right in and meet you 
in which they can, of course, do things to you, your family, or steal your stuff. Of course, you don't want that to happen. So keeping it locked is the first strategy you need to do. You need to understand, and I, and I have not actually uh, verified these, this data, so take it with a grain of salt, but I read that 86% of burglars come to your house will avoid contact with people. So with that, if they basically have something to stop them or they hear you inside the house, they'll probably take off. Three quarters will leave if they hear a noise. Again, haven't verified that, but that's something to think about that basically you being there and that door locked may be enough to simply thwart an invasion. Number three, talk with your family. You remember the good old days when somebody came to your door? Everybody was like, oh, somebody's here, and everybody would run out and see what's going on. It was probably a neighbor or a friend or possibly another salesperson. But even the salespersons back then were, I think, I think a little bit more on the reputable side. Not today. Somebody knocks on your door and everybody hides for cover, which honestly is a good thing to do. When it comes to answering the door, for some reason, little kids, of course they weren't ta taught otherwise, when somebody knocks on the door, rings the doorbell, they run right over. And you have to really teach them, guys. Make sure you talk to your family. Find the person or persons in your family who's best at defending your home and let those people be the ones to answer your door. Because if kids are there, they'll let anybody in. So make sure you work this out with your family and practice about this so they know exactly what to do when the time comes. Practice, practice, practice. In fact, even go out and ring the doorbell just to test to see, just to test them to see if they'll come to the door or not. Make sure you don't let your kids or anybody otherwise who may not be able to protect themselves or your family answer that door. Number four, don't unlock it. You heard me. Do not unlock that door. So your inside door is open. Maybe you have the screen door and it's locked. Maybe it's actually a storm door and somebody's there. Because of your good nature, you'll tend to want to unlock the door and go out and greet this person. Hey, what's going on? You, Why are you here? But understand, once you open that door up, you're opening up trouble. Okay, So make sure you keep it locked. And I know it's very awkward and weird. Even if you actually keep your inside door shut, even if you actually especially have like one of those doorbells that actually has a camera on it, talk through that, that's even better. Oh, that's by far better. But do not open up that area to let them come in you are simply opening yourself up for attack. So talk through the door, keep the door locked, tell them to go away, yell at them, whatever you need to do. Number five, protect yourself. I know your first instinct when somebody rings the doorbell is to run to the door and see what's going on. But no, your first thing you should do flat out is have a weapon. Practice this too. Go grab a weapon. Now, uh, pepper spray, bear spray, some other kind of spray, if you know what I mean, that I can't talk about on the channel and basically have it at the ready so in case somebody does try to come in. So you need to be, this is not a time in our culture to pussyfoot around. You need to protect yourself by having a weapon. Number six, keep it hidden. So not only have a weapon, but keep it hidden behind your back, keep it in a drawer right next to there or on top of a table where the person out there can't see it. It's really interesting when it comes to people coming to your door and when it comes to burglars and things like that, if you don't know how to use the weapon, if you don't know how to fight, your first instinct is to pull it up. I'm going to pepper spray you if you... That, you know what that does? That tells the criminal that you're scared and you're depending on that weapon to basically hold them off. And guess what a criminal tries to do? They're going to try to take your weapon. I mean, you see police officers who are well-trained, they try to take police officer weapons. And that's why with cops, you always see them turn like this to keep the weapon away from the person because they'll try to take it. And of course, people will do the same thing, like put the bear spray right in his face. You're asking them to take it out of your hand. Keep it hidden. This is the whole point of what people talk about with brandishing weapons. You don't want to brandish weapons. You want to keep it hidden. And then when the time comes, you need to very quickly pull it out and use it. Okay, but keep it hidden until that time comes. Number seven, watch for the red thread. Okay, the red thread again. It's a sales term. It's actually not just a sales term, but any type of term when it comes to business and such, where you want to make a connection with someone. And salespeople who are like true salespeople will watch for these things. You come to the door and you have a shirt on with sailboats on it. I'm just making this up, obviously. And they'll say, oh my gosh, I love sailing. Do you love sailing? And they'll try to make a connection because they know if you're more at ease with them, if you can relate with them, then you're more likely to buy their stuff. But again, it's not just about sales and it's not even just about business, but it absolutely connects with criminals too. Criminals have often a very intrinsic, unique ability to try, to try to find that red thread. They want to try to find a common connection with you so you'll let your guard down. And once you let your guard down, that's it. They know you, they have you. So watch for this kind of stuff next time you're talking with someone. And again, some of these guys are mastered at this where they completely make you feel at ease to let your guard down. And that's the whole thing about these scammers trying to scam money because they know when you 
get that email that says, hey, the king of such and such country wants to give you $23 million, you know that's a scam. But if they actually try to come to you with a very plausible thing saying, hey, you know, I was talking about this and look, I see you have the same type of friends we do, whatever the case may be, they're going to get you. And that's why that one salesperson came over and said, hey, I was just at your neighbor's house, which they know that I know that neighbor. And I saw they have their three kids. They know I see that. It is going to make let my guard down and say, oh, that's nice. He knows my neighbor. But he got that information because he went to that neighbor and got that information. And I'm sure, well, not even sure, I'm positive, the neighbor is going to say things like, hey, have you checked out Eric's house over there? And he's going to probably buy this product too because he's a friend of mine. Of course, the salesperson's like, <laughs> gotcha. Number eight, keep your information to yourself. So if he had gone to that neighbor and was trying to sell him this set of books, and the neighbor, and I'm sure he said at this one point, I'm sure he actually connected with another neighbor, you know, hey, Bob down the street with his two kids told me to come talk to you. And he comes to my neighbor and says, oh, so I hear you have kids. How many kids do you have? Obviously, the neighbor was very quick to say, oh, I have three kids. Oh, really? That's wonderful. I have two kids. I have mine are boy and girl. How about you? Of course, the guy probably had no kids at all. Oh, I've got three daughters. And not only is he finding that red thread connection, but you are now divulging serious information to this person. Let's say he really is selling books. And by the way, I want to say this real quick too. Think about this. Um, this company specifically that was trying to come to my house and sell books has actually had rumors that it's actually part of a child trafficking ring. Now, from doing more research on it, it sounds like the rumors probably aren't true, but who knows? Why are you letting some stranger know who's in your house? Why are you letting them know how many kids you have? How, why are you letting them know you actually have three daughters? It's, I know why. The answer is rhetorical. Because when somebody makes you feel at ease, you want to feel at ease with them and you start divulging this information to try to connect with them instead of actually them just being a salesperson. It makes you feel more relaxed. But you do not want to do this. If he comes over and says, hey, I hear you have some kids, you'll say, what are you selling? What is going on with this? I'm not letting you know how many kids I have or anything that's going on in the house. And that's actually going to make them throw off too. And they'll probably be more quick to say, oh yeah, I'm trying to sell you some, some homeschool books. And by the way, the homeschool books they were trying to sell, I looked it up. We have some of the same books. They were selling them for 10 times what we paid for them. But that's just a sales technique. You know, we're used to that kind of stuff. Number nine, don't rat out your neighbors. How did he know to come to our house? Because that one neighbor we had ratted us out. Thank you very much. And that person I ended up buying books from him. How do we know that? Because they put him on Instagram, I think it was, and we saw him taking a picture with them all happy, bought these books. They bought these books. And, and I guarantee that neighbor said, oh, go see Eric. Don't rat out your neighbors. Listen, we're a community. It is not this neighbor against us. In fact, that neighbor of, I, neighbor of ours I'm talking about is a very good friend of ours. We love these people. But they were very quick to simply say, oh, go to Eric's house. And more than likely, guess what? They probably said, go to Eric's house. He's got a bunch of kids and they homeschool. And the list goes on. So you actually have at this point your neighbors giving out your information. You may not be able to control your neighbors and what actions they have. But you can control your actions for our other neighbors. Because I guaranteed if I would have talked to him, and even if I was nice about it and said, no, I don't buy any books, you know what his first, his next answer would be, question would be was, so tell me, who, who around here as far as neighbors might actually be interested in buying some of these? Okay, that's something you need to keep, keep in, in mind because you don't want to rat those neighbors out. All right, so let's go to number 10. But remember, we have a bonus, which is really huge. Number 10, silent and hidden. Instead of answering the door at all, your best bet is to quickly shut off the lights, everybody go quiet, and hide in the dark in the house. <laughs> it sounds, sounds crazy, doesn't it? But you know, again, back in the 50s, people come to your door, hey, how are you? You have no idea who's coming up to your house now, and there's a lot of people out there bent on evil. Find a curtain, look through the cracks, see what's going on, make sure that person is not going to be causing any trouble. Now, why do I say this? Again, a large percent of people, burglars, will not break in your house if you're home. But if you're pretending to not be home, you actually are offering to let them come in. Now, if you have no way to protect yourself, you may want to skip this whole thing. But let me put it this way. In my house, if that person came and knocked on the door and we went quiet, didn't know I was there, and he was a burglar trying to come in, I would take care of business once he did. That other option is you talk to him, hey, what's going on? And then he waits for a time when you're not there, maybe watch your cars, then he could take advantage of your house to burglar it, to take, to take things out of it which I don't want that to happen while I'm gone. I mean, again, another reason to have a dog too, because dogs kind of scare burglars sometimes, not always. But in those situations, you want to make sure 
that you keep things on the down low when they come to the house. Because honestly, it may be looked at as a trap, but I'd rather trap that guy in my house, take care of business now before he has a chance to coming back later. Definitely bad news, especially when he comes back at night and tries to like take your daughter, whatever the case may be. Don't play with those things. Personally, I'd rather make a stand in my house without him knowing of a surprise attack, if you will. Bonus, watch your flank. I save this one for last because it is so, so vitally important. And most people don't think, think of this kind of stuff. Flanking maneuvers are simply put when, like in a military strategy, that you think everything, the battle's right in front of you and will actually send units to the side or even to the rear sometimes to be able to put in a situation where you'll have no idea what's coming. And smart burglars know these techniques. Um, here's a quick story for you to help you understand the situation. Uh, in the military, I did a lot of classified stuff, spent a lot of time overseas, and I was in a house, as best I could put it, with some other military guys. There's a few of us there that stayed there practically around the clock. And guess what happened? Uh, apparently, somebody tracked us down, knew where we were at, and they came banging on the door with a bat, mind you, banging on the door. And your first attention is to look at the door. Oh my gosh, I hope they can't get through because obviously the banging was so loud, they weren't simply just knocking. And we know flanking maneuvers, and guess what? We look over, and other, other windows and doors, they were trying to come in that way as well. The whole front attack was simply just a deception to try to get you to focus that way while they flank you. You need to actually understand that this is a technique that burglars, especially if crap hits the fan, may take. They may come to the door, may even come to the door as being nice. Hey, hey, I have some homeschool books. I know there's an apocalypse going on right now, but there's some homeschool books I want you to look at. In the meantime, while your focus is there and the whole family is kind of watching, they easily could be trying to break through through a basement window, a common portal of entry. If you have the front door open, if you do have an alarm system, you probably turn off the alarm to open that door. And they know this stuff. So they may flank you. You need to be able to prepare and practice with this with your family members. Make it so you always have a certain person or persons at the front door while you have other persons watching portals of entry of trying to get into your house. Because again, right now, is that going to happen? Highly unlikely. Not saying no, but unlikely. But during crap, it's the fan. If you have food, people know you have food, whatever the case may be. I can pretty much guarantee this is a tactic that some people might use. And understand as people get hungrier and hungrier, they get more conniving and try to think about ways to take your food too. Okay, so I hope these things helped you out. Different strategies to be able to keep your home safe. And there's far more. We'll be talking about outside strategies too. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.